One of the things that sucks about the DRZ400 is heavy pull levers, especially for the clutch. I absolutely hate a heavy clutch. You can't fiddle it, you can't feel the clutch very, very well. So I got new levers I'm gonna to install today. This is the piece de resistance. This is a lever pull reducer. You can find them from $45 to $10. Depends on how much money you wanna spend. It's a very, very simple design. As you can see, there are two cables inside. So when you pull on your lever, you're reducing the pull on the cable. So this goes at the end of your lever and this is gonna go through, your, this is gonna be your cable. And what happens is that when you pull on the top, it's a lever system and it's quite clever. It's clever enough that you could change the pivoting position. So this one is, you could disassemble it and move this pin to a different position to have a different effect. Before you get too deep into it, uh, it comes with two cables on one end and another cable on the other end. This cable is removable. This is going to be replaced by the cable that you have on your bike. With this occasion, I'm going to also replace my levers. So first I have to take the uh, slack out of the, the cable. By doing this, you're basically building sl slack back into the cable so you can slide out. Over here, if you align this little two um, slots, the cable will come through and then will drop at the bottom of the, new, the lever and now the lever can be removed. With the lever removed you can install a new one nice and shiny. Unfortunately the support for the DRZ is not the prettiest support in the world but it will complement the bike still. This level not only flexible forwards but also has an adjuster over here so you could make it longer or shorter depends on where your fingers are. At this point you are ready to install this reducer. Uh, what you will have to do is you'll have to find some extra space for the cable inside the handlebars because you're going to extend the cable basically for about six inches. That's something you have to keep under consideration. You remove the inside part. So this is the inside part and this will just slide through and the inside part will just stay with the uh, cable. Then you could put the piece back in uh, while you're installing the other part of the cable. So this slides through. And I'll show you the final product. There is a special slot that you could run the cable through and you could just crank it all the way in. Choose the location of your multiplier so this is going to be adjustable. It changes the amount of force that you could pull from. I'm going to go for the easiest. It feels like I owe you an explanation and this is a correction. The mistake that I made is I said that this is the easiest one to pull uh, on the bottom hole but actually the closer you get to the cables the easier it is to pull. So right now when I move the cables it moves a lot easier than it was moving before. So this is going to adjust that and then uh, right now you are actually ready to put a cap on. There's like nothing else that you have to do in here. Uh, some people recommend to put some grease in so I'm going to grease this thing before I'm going to put a cap on. I'm not going to lie to you, finding an extra 6 inches uh, in the handlebars for the cable is going to be a little bit of a challenge. But the installation is quite simple, it just slides through this little gap over here as it, uh, as it came out. Just line up the gap, slide it through. In case you were wondering how it works inside, check this out. This is how it works. So it's a very, very simple mechanism. Very, very, very simple mechanism. This is the value on my channel, the hidden side of the truth. On Vegas Romaniac, uh, you're going to see videos as you saw before, that uh, everything is working and we are good to go. And also you're going to see the truth. The truth is that it's uh, quite hard to make this one work. So uh, I am at a stage right now where the clutch is not pulling long enough. So as you can see, I have a little bit of a gap over here. So I have to make this one go further that way. Also, this piece over here doesn't fit through this fitting. So this is a thicker piece of metal uh, or wire than this part over here, which is the original clutch cable. So um, now I'll have to figure out a way to uh, uh, make this one go through there. I was thinking inside the box instead of thinking outside the box. There's a little cap that you could see here at the end which I grinded off because it was not fitting into the um, fitter for the clutch lever for the DRZ. Uh, instead of thinking it right what I should have done is I should have moved the one from the lever. So this one is the one from the lever. I should have moved it over here and then basically swapped them around. Uh, because this specific uh, connector which came with the box was designed for this thick of a cable where this one was not. Also, uh, it definitely extends the cable for a good 6 inches and uh, because of that uh, you're going to have extra cable that right now as you can see the, the face plate is off because 
there's really no room for the extra uh, piece of cable which I have to reroute somehow and uh, with clutch cables you have to reroute them that way that they don't stretch in the wrong direction uh, and start scraping and creating more of a problem. So yeah, when I'm making these videos for you guys, you know, there's a hidden side of the truth. Uh, a lot of the times you see a video uh, with a, a rebuild for the top end for the motor it looks really really easy sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's really really easy you don't really really know people just cut the videos that way to make it look convenient um, in this case I'm still fighting this thing and here it is the entire system is installed as you can see uh, the box is over here and then the cable just got a little bit longer and then it's uh, going this way so it's about five inches longer and I had to find a little bit of a room here in the um, plate behind the plate right over here I have to find a little bit of a room for the cable but it moves very very nice and smooth so this is definitely an improvement so here's the box here's the clutch definitely improvement um, as everything that you add to the motorcycle that is off the market you're introducing an extra piece that can go wrong so reliability wise you'll have to stay subscribed to the channel because I'll come back to you uh, with some updates as far as that goes I haven't modified the system at all this is the beautiful thing about this I haven't modified the system at all so if this one breaks uh, in the middle of the trail somewhere or is causing some problems all I have to do is just take a screwdriver take the cable out put it into my clutch and I'm good to go so I haven't modified the system to a point where uh, it becomes the system becomes useless which is actually a nice thing about this uh, particular item uh, uh, in the future I think I'm gonna secure this box a little bit here on the handlebars I haven't secured yet so far it seems to be moving really really well even when you're moving the handlebars so it stays with it um, it's definitely a much smoother clutch um, you reduced the, the the room where you're pulling the clutch but you uh, made it a lot smoother and a lot softer which is really, really nice uh, so you don't have any dead spots on the clutch it feels really really good this is really the best operator you could get for a clutch uh, that has a cable uh, the other best thing will be a hydraulic which will cost you 250 300 700 depends which one you find thank you very much for watching i hope you appreciated this video let me know what you think at the bottom and here's some footage with this drz uh, it was fast before the, the clutch felt really really shitty but it was fast before now it's gonna get even better so if you like this footage and you think that the bike was quite fast and uh, and quite reliable quite good uh, it had a good feel except the clutch now this should solve that problem let's put it through some technical stuff See how it's gonna do over here. Uh, the control over the bike is very, very important, um, and I have a clutch that is hard and sticky, and definitely makes the bike a little bit harder to ride. Uh, controlling the bike, it's 50% uh, of of how the motor feels, and the motor is 75% of what the bike feels, and. I'd rather have a good motor than good suspension any day because if you can control that power it just makes such a huge difference so it can handle this kind of stuff quite well it's just that uh, your clutch precision is uh, limited by the fact that the clutch is not the best clutch in the world it's a little bit on the stiff side and it grabs a little bit more like uh, just grabs a little bit more strange than you know it's a nice smooth hydraulic or the YZ clutch basket that I have this bike was designed 15 years ago you know and had a clutch that was meant to be reliable oh hit that rock really well and the clutch is reliable, but it's most likely running on some very, very heavy springs, which uh, will make the clutch feel stiffer than it needs to be. Uh, so, yeah, controls on the bike is what makes a bike feel either good or bad. To control the bike is usually from the suspension and the motor.
Italy a road bike that can do this kind of stuff and it can do it quite fun and quite easy. So I would uh, not have this as my primary bike, but a bike that I would you know, ride from time to time or like a rental, you know, something that you rent out go somewhere, you want to ride some dirt, this will do it. <laughs> 